Hi, Carol here. Welcome to my craft room. We're going to be using a lot of elements for shabby chic cards today. This blue fern factory hinges is one of the uh, die cut cardboard pieces. A lovely fern. And this is called rose bouquet and um, gorgeous. But the focal image on the front page is going to be this spellbinder die. Love this set. They, it comes with the die. It's called Draping Vines Frame, and you get the inside you can use, the gut piece, the outside you get beautiful hummingbirds and little wee flowers in this die. That's the only element I don't use, and I've been working on this card since Saturday, believe it or not, and it took all day today for me to figure out why YouTube would not accept my video. Honestly, I've never spent so much time, and I guess it's the time factor under 50 minutes. It started out an hour and 20 minutes. It wouldn't take right down to five edits. Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm hoping this one will work. So it's a six and a half by seven and a half inch base because of the actual uh, vine die cut here. But I love oversized cards when you make shabby chic. And this whole video that I started out Saturday night right here, the start of this video was for those that love shabby chic cards. How just a few surprise elements you can make and make your cards stunning. And I'm working on all four sides of this card as I usually do. As if you watch my videos, you know I love to do every side of a card. I'm using this vintage basic 6x6 paper pack front. This is the actual cardboard front that shows you what is on the inside. And I cut this up. I love doing this with the fronts of the paper packs uh, if you like the images on there. And I wanted to use this piece on the top there in particular for a balance. And um, it worked perfectly, nice and thick like I like my cardstock. And then this rose bouquet, I'm putting some gesso on it because I am going to use Distress inks. And gesso is just a base that will um, secure the ink onto the cardboard in a wonderful way. It uh, just is a staple for your craft room when doing any mixed media um, type projects. Another idea I had um, is printouts. I've never used printouts, but a friend sent this uh, a couple of images to me, and I love it. It saves time. You don't have to stamp your cardstock to get the image you want, and I found this to be absolutely beautiful. I know I say that all the time, but this is just gorgeous. I love the roses. I love the vintage colors in it. I think it's beautiful, and I wanted to make a frame. So all you do is use your scissors, cut the center piece off, and you have yourself a beautiful frame. And because vintage cards are distressed or on the edges, precision is not a worry with shabby chic cards. I hope you enjoy the process of what I'm going to do with this one card base. You know I love to do all four sides of my cards, so this was truly enjoyable. I wish I could have gotten it up for you uh, yesterday, but I've never had to struggle so much with uh, getting it up on YouTube before ever. I kept editing and editing and bringing it down, bringing it down <laughs> to try and get you to see how it was actually created. So anyway, this paper pack, this vintage basics card pack, I love this piece. Well, I wanted to pick out a cream color, and this page was perfect. It had the little wee bird sitting in that little square up there on the left top corner, and it worked lovely to put my uh, Dreamweaver crackle paste on. And this is one of my favorite, I think it's a staple for any craft room if you use stencils, and that is the script. It is so pretty, and I pretty well, talking about pretty, right? <laughs> I level it. Uh, I don't want a lot of raised lettering on this because you're going to be opening and closing the card, and it's going to be heavy, and it's going to rest on this. So I thought you might as well leave it uh, not too high. And uh, there you have it. Didn't it turn out pretty? 
but there's other elements like the bricks here that I want it raised up so I add a lot more of the Dreamweaver crackle paste. And I try to work in the rule of thirds, even doing cards. And uh, here I've got the top, the left hand side, and a little bit on the left side of the card. So that's three different places. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when I put the paste on, I don't try to even it out. I kind of put uh, here and there, globbing it on the actual stencil so it does look like a uh, brick because brick is not smooth it's pitted and uh, see how I'm kind of just making lines in it and going every which way so that it has some texture on the bricks and then I heat set it right afterwards so that the crackle will be activated and I think it looks just so realistic um, when you heat set it and then I grab the other stencil with the um, with that beautiful script and I heat set that and both of them are finished and ready to go onto the card base. Because I usually do four sides of my vintage shabby chic cards, I don't like to finish one page. I think I've said that before in other videos, possibly at the beginning of this one, but look at that. Love this cream colored cardstock with that off-white sparkle it's just beautiful and it matches the filigree beautifully so I take my distress tool and you can use scissors whatever you feel comfortable with I use both and look at how you can use the inside gut piece of that spellbinder die the vine die and this is going to be where I'm going to rest my sentiment this is where you open the card and uh, so now I'm preparing this piece. I don't know where it's going to go yet, but my distress inks come out in the mini cubes. And you can do it with the applicator or direct to paper. Each works wonderfully. And I'm doing the greens for now, now the browns, and I add a little bit of yellow hues into the color because there's going to be the Tim Holtz tree dye. The trees are going to rest on this and this is going to actually be the back page. I don't know it yet, I just know that I want to use all the elements in the die set and um, I set it aside but I want to prepare everything and then I'll do the placement at the end. And I'm adding globs of the, uh, as you can see I'm not smoothing it out because when you put elements on it, you're not going to see a lot of it. And I knew this was going to have trees on it. So I wanted it to be more um, blotchy than I usually would. And see how I'm just adding dark, 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 and greens and browns and just going crazy on this. I just love the look of, uh, of the ink being splattered all over. So I did use the brushed corduroy and then the wild honey the vintage photo and I don't know what that last one is right there because I, it was kind of blurry but anyway the brown hues and then um, I set that aside and start on this beautiful tree dye isn't it gorgeous I ended up cutting the tree off one off each side because I knew that I, I needed it to be more narrow in there and I used the green hues then I take the side of the cube to add some trunks to it. There were seven trunks. Uh, some were thick, some were thin. I'll show you close up. And I use the back of whatever paper I'm using to save cleanup. And that's where it's going to go. It's not going to go on that sheet of paper because that um, this is the back of my card base. But you have to look at it and say, okay, do I want that to seat on there? And I didn't like that. I love those sparkles showing. I didn't want to sacrifice the paper here by covering it with another paper. So uh, I distress all the edges and then I take my distress inks and I go over it to look like that other sheet because you are going to flip the pages and you want each page to run nicely into each other. So that was my thinking here and then here comes the balance. I'm going to use um, from the cover of my paper pack and then I have a metal heart here I got out of my stash I love that because 
another texture, right? And I'm just putting a little bit of the brown on it so it's not so stark white. And it was actually more of a cream than a white. And my card base is cream as well. And I think it looks oh so, so pretty, don't you? My little birdie thinks it's pretty. And look at the sparkles in that page. Oh, it's so nice. Uh, it just jumps out at you, and that's what I wanted because my sentiment is going to be cream, the Merry Christmas, and I'm going to have my sentiment three layers high. So I put under that heart, I glued this uh, cardboard piece that had the word love and then the dictionary meaning for it, and I set it over there. I knew I was going to use that somewhere, so I got it prepped and ready. And then I take this dye, this twig dye, and I start coloring that in three colors, green, brown, and yellow. Whatever colors you like. In, uh, and I love distress inks, but you can use any inks you have in your stash. It will look beautiful. So then I set that aside. I use the uh, corner edge of my ink to make a line through the center that's darker. And yeah, I'm just experimenting there and uh, I end up cutting around the heart later but uh, for now I'm just looking at placement and we're going to carry on and I hope this video does encourage you to if you haven't done a, a shabby sheet card I hope one of the pages on here you um, give it a try on a Christmas card I think you'll absolutely be addicted to it shabby sheet cards are wonderful it just works your creativity, and I love that. So I like the fact that the filigree, uh, I'm sorry, the bricks and the, uh, the wording both going in the same direction. I like that. Uh, that's another thing I looked at. And now we're going to color the actual vine. So I set that card there so I could draw from the colors on the front page because this is going to be on the second page but I want when you flip it open you want it to um, align up you want the colors to all be coordinated and uh, so that it just flows from the front to the inside and to the back and nothing looks sweeter than this as far as uh, shabby chic and vintage love the reds in it that fired brick with the vintage photo and then the uh, the green hues on this um, beautiful vine looked gorgeous. <clears throat> and it was nice on the inside page where those sparkles uh, stand out. Your eye was just drawn to the Merry Christmas. And uh, I really like that as far as um, Shabby Chic goes. Another thing I... I was thinking to myself, oh no, you're going to have to put glue all over that because I didn't put the stick it behind there. Then I remembered I had my Zyron <laughs> and it was up high on a shelf and I don't use it that often and it's wonderful for putting through and adding tape to the back of your projects. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, I ended up taking it down and putting it at uh, eye view so I always remember that I can run my cardstock that is intricate through uh, and get the glue on the back so the Zyron mine is a five inch I know it comes in one inch and I think it comes in nine and twelve but I know for twelve for sure so it's handy to have around your craft room and here we have the rose bouquet I'm using the same colors as I used on the vine and I'm doing direct ink to paper, in this case, ink to uh, car, uh, cardstock. And uh, actually, it's not cardstock, it's cardboard. Yes, isn't it beautiful? It's so intricate. And once I get that finished, we have the gesso on it that is making the ink stick to the cardboard. It looks gorgeous. I just love it. And then this is going to be a piece that we put on the front of this shabby sheet card. And uh, it's just beautiful. All the colors are intertwined with the rose colored uh, paper that we um, ran through the computer.
and uh, it's it just couldn't be sweeter. You have the roses on the paper, the roses on this um, uh, cardboard cutout, and uh, that to me just seemed to simplify the process and you didn't have to really think too hard on what you're going to put on the front page. Well, now that I have a few of the elements ready, I decide to put the inside page down. I know that this is going to be where my sentiment is going to lay and this is uh, dimensional tape I get at the dollar store. You know my dollar store where nothing's a dollar? I got a few rolls of this and I really like it because it's not that high but then it's not flat. It gives you kind of a little bit of a raise to your paper cardstock and uh, it's super, super, super sticky. So I think I'm going to check that dollar store next time I'm in there because I do like this and you get quite a bit on a roll. I think it was $1.50 for the roll which isn't too bad for double-sided tape. And now my edges are all distressed and I know I'm going to put that balance up there so I lay it down towards the bottom and it matches and look at that. <laughs> I tell you what, you could do so much with this vine die. It's crazy. Like you could break it up and just use it for corners. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful die, don't you think? And then I'm going to have to cut some off each side so that it'll fit underneath there because this is going to be like a balance. And I encourage you to look at the fronts of your paper packs because some of them are very nicely set up. And this one was for sure. It had all the little samples of the paper packs. And then I just distressed each one on the corner of the balance there. And I'm using these round glue dots. Yes, this is something I had in my stash forever, and I like them because these are really high. They are higher than dimensionals, so I really like that idea. And my goal for this year was to use stuff I had already in my stash. And uh, I had a box of these glue dots, and I thought, you know what? And they're from Michaels. They're, they're accessible, and they're just a nice raised dimensional, so I put them on the... Uh, page and then on the back side of this balance that I made and then I tore a little piece out just to give it a little aged look and then when you open the card this is going to be where my sentiment will lie so I don't want too much texturally and dimensionally on the inside page where um, the sentiment will rest but look at that I just think it's gorgeous and then I'm thinking, oh, that's going to take forever to put glue on the back of this. And I walked by and looked up on a shelf, and there sat my, um, what do you call that machine? My uh, Xyron, my 5-inch Xyron machine. Oh, I was so pleased because you just run it through. It puts the glue, the tape on the back so easily. And I'm telling you, I took it down and put it on a shelf where I could see it because I'll be using that. Yes, look at it. It's so shabby. <laughs> I think it just, yes, I'm showing you the mess of my top of my island eeks. I'm telling you, it was a mess. And so I had to stop what I was doing halfway through the creation of this card and clean. Look. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the island that I use, and I keep all of my heat tools and my embossing powders there. I have a three-tier stand that I keep all of my um, glue and stuff, and my Fiskar self-sharpening uh, cutter is on the right side now. My Copic um, air compressor is down by my feet there and my garbage can because generally I stand by where I have the camera but I chose to sit a lot of this. This is some of my beading that I am doing now that I'm doing some beading and then I cleaned up and this is a peek at the front. Look at that. This is what we're going to create for the front of our card. But anyway I haven't cleaned up yet so let's move on. I thought I'd just take a break and show you that I don't work in uh, I don't work very well with everything uh, piled up around me. I work better standing up. I mean, I know that doesn't make a hill of beans to anybody watching this, but I thought I would just share that. 
So here I put the trees on there and of course it does not go. It's just too much going on there. I've already cut it and I'm working on this card. It, yeah, there's where I put the trunks down on the trees and I'm, this is Sunday. I started on Saturday night. This is Sunday between church services. I can tell by the change of clothing here and I'm working on doing this yes it was kind of sticky and I didn't want to lose my um, uh, this piece like getting stuck before I ran it through and so I did it one at a time isn't this wonderful look at that's all there is to it and then you just cut it off oh what a time saver I haven't used this forever and I think I know I have the little one inch X one and then I think it comes in nine and twelve inch but I like the five inch um, I say that I like the 5 inch, I hardly use it, but I found the 5 inch was just perfect for me. And they go on sale at Michael's all the time for the refills. So I've always, you know, if I go in there, I check and see if it's a super sale and then I'll pick one up. Because they're very costly and uh, they go on for less than half price sometimes. So I took my Teflon bone folder and I go over it to secure the tape to the back of the image here, the die cut and uh, that helps and uh, yeah so now we're going to move on let's see I don't think I'm doing it this way no isn't that something after editing this many times I pretty well have this memorized so I take this off and I put it on the bottom now they'll be sticky in between here and I thought um, that'd be nice if you wanted to use glitter on it because it would stick to the uh, glue parts in between but I didn't want to do that so all you do is take your finger and you just rub 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 it forms a little ball of the glue and you throw it out easy peasy and look how nice it comes off of this strip oh what a time saver that is and we'll place this one on the bottom I see how I started to take the glue off and I thought no 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 no, no Carol just wait till you have it down there and then rub it with your finger and it worked wonderfully I think this is one of my prettiest dyes that I have. It is just beautiful to me and I think the colors look very shabby chic vintage and that card stock I think adds to the whole picture here. See how it just formed little balls there? And the balance raised up looks really pretty. So once I get the glue up here we're going to move on and put the piece on the top and then I think I move forward to the front of the card if I'm right. I'm pretty sure but here I just want to make sure that what if I put that other piece down it's where I want it and um, I like just looking at it. It's so crazy pretty. Now because the front of the card will be my focal point I want to start to situate uh, so I know yes that's not going there. That piece actually with that tree is going to be my back, my back page but all the time I'm moving things around just to see I want the card to flow on each page so I add my distress inks this is the front and I know it's the front because it has that uh, crease that I, when I made the card the fold is right here so I add some greens and some deep browns and uh, I want it to be very dark because the page is very light see that you're only going to see a small portion of the color, but I want it to be very vivid so that the piece stands out. Then I take my vintage photo and I go over my bricks. And if you find it's too dark, just take a baby wipe and wipe it down. That's the beauty of Distress Inks. Water activates it, so anything liquid act activates the ink, which is nice. And then I'm going to add... Um, a ribbon to the right hand side because shabby chic you have to have a ribbon or a bow excuse me uh, you have to have a bow somewhere and then I love my corners two of out of four corners I like to do very dark for some reason I have that on all my shabby chic cards I think and then I distress I took a little bit more off the side here so I just distressed it again added some ink and then we're going to start the placement. Isn't that pretty? Uh, I kept the print white. I'm just taking a look at it before I put it down. 
and I realized I want to put on the back side where it's already taped I want to put a bow so I grabbed my gate and this gate I had for another project it was in my stash I had already put a metal piece hook on it because I was going to use one on each side on this different project but I ended up using one so I just put it away and it worked perfect because I want to put a wreath on that hook that is attached to the gate already and I get those gates at Michael's love them every time I go to Michael's I grab a pack because for mixed media and on cards I think it gives a wonderful look to any card so we're going to lay this down. I've already put the ribbon on as you can see there. And it's that shabby chic ribbon. Really nice. I tie it in a tiny, tiny bow because I just feel that shabby chic cards need to have a feminine, you know, something feminine. There, there just is like roses and uh, the gate. And look at my little, I end up having to look at the ends on my bow. They're at the top. <laughs> I don't know why I tied it like that. I ended up changing it though, in case you noticed that. So I take my hot glue and I put my gate down. It has that metal hook on it. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna get my twine out, my roll of twine I got at a thrift store. And I'm going to um, put it on that hook. I'm gonna put a, a wreath made of twine. And here I'm just, after I change the bow around, I'm securing the ends down with some hot glue and there you go it's facing the right way now <laughs> yes I think it just looks really cute and then I grabbed some cheesecloth and this is antique white cheesecloth I wanted some more texture isn't that nice so I thought I'm just gonna put a little bit there because of that rose um, um, cardboard piece there that we uh, distressed I want it to go above this so all the time I'm thinking texture so you have the nice texture in the ribbon then you have the cheesecloth and then I'm going to grab this die cut and look at it. it's way too big so I cut it off which is wonderful because I'll get the other half for another project and there we have it I put some hot glue on it and I'm going to seat it right there oh it's beautiful. So that's one, two elements in each corner, and then there's the twine. I'm going to put a hinge on the lower right corner, but you just want to wrap it and wrap it and wrap it, and then leave enough of the twine to sew through, like go in and out, weave it in and out, in and out, and then just take a little bit of glue from your hot glue gun to secure it, and that is going to be, sorry it's blurry there, that's going to rest on that hook, and I'm going to put some baby bud roses all the way around it because the image has roses. So it worked out perfectly. And I sit it under the hook um, there just to see how it looks. It's the perfect fit. So I grab my hot glue gun. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful twine? And there's the metal hook. It rests on. Just beautiful. And I'm really happy with the front page. These are my little bud, uh, micro rose buds, they call them, in white. And they're from Stamp and Scrapping. I think that's a Canadian store, actually. I got these years ago, and uh, they've been in my stash. And I, so I like to cut them off and use the stem. I wrap it around my Stampin' Up! Pokey tool right there because it's nice and fine, the metal on it. And when you wrap it around, you have that twirly end on the bottom, and it just looks so delicate. So I put all of these around the, um, all the way around the twine, and it just is a beautiful element for a wreath. I really, really am in love with this front page. So I tied a little wee teensy bow, put it off, not at the bottom, just a little ways up, on the right hand side so it wasn't uh, you know it was a little uneven I like that look and then I cut it off and there you have it a rose wreath and then you have the rose background oh so pretty don't you think I knew I was going to put the hinge on so I was ready to go back to the inside page where the sentiment is going to be so I grabbed this other piece of vine 
and it will attach beautifully. So it looks like it's one continuous um, piece, even though we cut little pieces off each side so I could push it down. And there you have it. I'm just taking the glue off and I'm going to work with that wonderful, um, look at that close up, love the colors of this, I really do. It matches the outside, the front page, beautifully I think. And so I grab my die here and I grab some, um, yeah I was thinking of putting that bird on there and I thought no way, it looks beautiful. Sometimes less is more, right? So I leave it like that, I grab my package of Stick It and I put it on a 120 pound card stock right here so that I can make this Merry Christmas 3 high. But first I thought of my little bee skates. Oh, I love these. Love these Christmas ice skates by Little Bee. They're ceramic and the blade looks real. It is so realistic, these skates. And I decided to hang them off the balance, of course. You want to make them just a little uneven, one on top of the other. And oh, I fell in love with this. It brought back so many memories these beautiful ice skates and look at that you don't have to have it even because that's the beauty of shabby chic but there's something about me I like to make sure it's even and then I cut this um, love definition cardboard behind the heart and it's going to go right there just love it look at that I use the hot glue I put it down and then see how I had that little wee slit I didn't slide it over enough solved it die cut little wee um, hummingbirds out of this same die. So I set a hummingbird to cover that little emptiness right there. Isn't that cute? I put the same uh, fired brick red ink and now I'm going to add a little wee diamond for the eye. Little wee sparkle sparkle right there. And uh, I'm going to leave the front page I think for now and we're gonna move on. I'm just going to show a little close-up of this heart. I think it was just made for this corner. It's so pretty. The colors, they just don't take over. They kind of blend into the cardstock, which I really was happy with. And I love the gate. I love the rose wreath. You know, it's just a nice front. And then I thought, you know what? Um, I'm going to use the hinges. So I need to put some gesso on it. And it's by Blue Fern Studio. So I grabbed two of them, but I ended up using the bigger of the two, the one that's more lengthwise. I thought it just symmetrically fit right there. And I'm going to put some Distress inks. You take the cardboard out of the holes. I added some gesso to each one of them and set it aside to dry for just a minute and then I'm going to work on the page that's going to be on the top portion of where my sentiment's going to go for now. And what better uh, piece of paper, this is also a printout. I, what I do here is I take out about a quarter of an inch. Um, I don't go all the way to the top, I just want to cut this much out on three sides because I want to distress underneath on the cardstock in the colors of the birds, which are different hues of blue and the pink, kind of like the fired brick. So I start it and I just about come up to it, but I don't want to cut it off, right? So I leave the corners attached. I have three sides. I want to distress all of it and put some vintage photo so it really stands out and I love this look. And I think you'll agree with me when we put it down, adding extra blue so you can see through it just adds, yeah, I'm tapping, tapping, tapping here, yeah. I'm not tapping that fast, I kind of moved it forward. <laughs> but I'm thinking, okay, what am I gonna do? Of course, I'm gonna add the birds in 3D. I wanna raise them up, cut their feathers so that their feathers look realistic they're all like um, they look like feathers so I fussy cut took out my fussy cut scissors and uh, as you can see I move the paper I keep my scissors in one place and move the paper and what else can you put behind birds on their wings are feathers so I grabbed some feathers in the card in my stash and I glued them behind the actual feathers and I cut into all of the feathers there so that I could flick them up and the feathery effect would show through 
and I added some ink to them to match and I wanted to look like a sun ray so I pushed the inks down on the edges so that the birds looked like they were flying through a colored sun ray. That was, in my, that was my thought. And then see how I cut into all of the feathers. Then I stick my scissors through there and I actually feather those so they can come out and look 3D. And I place them on with hot glue and I add feathers behind that. And then I add some a bit of blue behind the two birds, blue ink, a little bit of the red, just lightly. And um, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. And then I have to go over all the insides of my distress edges with the vintage photo. And then we're going to press on to decorate. Now, I was thinking about the birds. I was thinking a mindset of uh, bird's nest and then burlap came to my mind. So I grabbed some out of my stash and I cut a piece for the top and underneath the birds. And that one bird that's flying down, the little mama bird, I knew I needed a cheesecloth nest in the left hand corner there. So that is already in my mind that I'm gonna put a nest on there with some little eggs in it. I'm gonna show you how I make eggs. Um, quick and simple and beautifully shabby chic to say the least. So after I get that on, I put one on the bottom and then I run some vintage photo across it just to distress it a little bit. And I'm using the hot glue to put it down. Isn't that pretty? You want to make sure it's above the cut you made because you want to see the colors on your cardstock. I grabbed the tail and feathers so that they were outside of the burlap. And then I added a little bit of feathers there as well that I put the fired brick really lightly on there. And here comes my cheesecloth. There's the little uh, mama bird's nest. She's flying down to check on her eggs right there. Oh, so pretty, don't you think? So there I placed down the paper and I knew I had to add just a little darker blue-green with the distress ink. So I go really heavy around there so that it peeks through the uh, cutouts that we made in the cardstock and back to my crackle paste and the poinsettia stencil by Tim Holtz. Love it. And I wanted to work in thirds so I had one bird in one section. I needed and then the two birds on the right hand side. I needed to have something up on the left hand side here and um, I didn't want to do it even so I really made the crackle paste thick and uneven so when I took it off you had this wonderful dimension. It is a Christmas card so the poinsettias went beautiful. Look at the feathers and you can see how I took the sides of the ink and made lines so it looked like a sun ray of feathers in the birds and then I take my micro brush and I color in with the distress inks just a little bit. I missed it with a spray, let it fall into all the cracks, and I'm pretty well finished with that. Um, I add the little eyes. I roughed up the face on this one. I put dark ink and then I took my pick that I have in my hand and I picked it so that you had some dimension in the fur on the crest of the head of the mama bird. And now we're going to go and seed it there. I just think it's beautiful to have the blue. I put a ton of dimensionals or tape, double-sided tape on the back. We're going to set that down. And I'm in love with this piece. And like I said, either one of these uh, um, sections can be the front page of your card. I just happen to like to do all four sides of my cards. So... Um, that's just the way I work and um, you know we eat to each his own right so I went back to the inside and added my texture snow texture it's called and look at that it sticks to anything you've roughed up and it will actually stick to a, a clear surface but you have to wait about 20 well I'd say 10 minutes for it to dry on it so I have that snow in there then I added some dots with my Nouveau um, I don't know what it's called, but you squeeze it out and you make dots with it. So I put some on the top, some little dots, and I put some on the bottom. It's called, it's antique white, and it's the Nouveau with that nice diamond uh, top on it. And now I cut out three 
Merry Christmas, and I piled them on top of each other, and look at that. I'm in love with this. I think this is mine. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I couldn't help it. <laughs> I love those little birds, don't you? So here we have it. Love this. I love the Nouveau dots. I like the, the texture snow on the skates. I love this page. This is my sentiment page, and that would work well for the front of a card, any card, shabby chic. So now I'm matching up that fire brick kind of color on the cardstock that I chose, and I'm using my 5-inch Xyron to run this twig through. Um, I just, I love that die. I use this a lot, actually. And um, we're going to go from there. So now it's time to make our eggs. You want to take your hot glue gun, let it rest about a half an hour so that the glue stick burns a bit. And then you want to make the shape of an egg and it's as easy peasy as that. Look at their little wee, all different sizes. And then I sprinkled some glass glitter and some um, sparkle glitter on there. And I put them each of them in a uh, salt shaker I got at the thrift store. Just a couple of salt shakers and uh, it stuck to the hot glue and then I took it off and that way you'll be able to see it because it would blend into the cheesecloth if I didn't add some type of glitter and sparkle on it. So I pick out three different sizes. I rest it inside the cheesecloth nesting for a mama bird that's flying down. I'm really happy with this. I add some hot glue I turned it upside down just so I could. Uh, it was easier on me to, for placement. And I put three different sizes of eggs in the nest. And, ah, oh, I fell in love with this page too. <laughs> I love them all. I love shabby chic cards. That's why I think I'm so excited to share this with you. I love the eggs right here. I love the poinsettias. I love the bird's wings with the feathers behind it. Um, I guess you you love your cards you make, right? You're the one that created them, so you should love them, I think. And here I set this behind. It has this paper right here, the fired brick. It has little hummingbirds behind there and teensy-weensy poinsettia on that pattern in the odd spot. I love it. It just, uh, I'm just making sure that all the glue is off here. And then I'm going to show you how to make a flat image look 3D. So here, this just has the glue on the back. So I set it down. I make sure it's nice and firm on there, you know. And then I'm going to add that snow text. Now watch this. I gave it the thumbs up. This is how you'll make it look three-dimensional. It's gritty. It will stick to the edges. That's what you want to do. You want to stick it down and then you want to take a baby wipe and push it into the um, die cut, the actual die cut of the trees. So just run it down, make sure it goes into all the edges like that and you're thinking, oh my Carol, what a hot mess. Oh no, wait till you see this. You take your dark ink, you go over it then you take your brown and you make your tree trunk, seven of them. And then I, I put down, I was going to say, I, I seat the twigs on the bottom. I cut it in half. I added some dark brown because you don't want your trees floating in the air. You always have to put something underneath uh, so it's not floating, right? And look at that. It looks three-dimensional because of the snow text behind the trees. Looks like a mist. And now we're going to move back to the front page so we can put our glorious hinge down. And there it is. So I take my inks. I make it really light. I, I want it to stand out. If I had it dark, it would have blended into the corner. So I just put three different colors on there. an orange, Like a red, a uh, light green, and a light brown. And then I grabbed my um, embossing powder, my clear embossing powder. I want this hinge to be shiny. And then I heat set it. I glue it down with my hot glue gun and I went towards my brads there up in the right hand corner. I have a glass jar with my gold and silver brads. And I found three brads that looked like actual screws. 
I cut the back of the brad off. I put some hot glue in these holes. I put the screws in there. It looks like I took a drill and actually drilled these screws into my hinge. I love it because of the texture. You have the wooden hinge, the wooden fence, the wire running through the fence, the wire holder for the wreath. You have the, uh, the metal uh, screws in the hinge. I'm taking off some of the glue here. It was too high. I did it too high and the uh, screw would have been up higher than the other one, so I took it out. You have the metal heart up there that's white. You're working with all of this texture, just beautiful, beautiful texture, and it all runs together. Uh, it's just, it's exactly what I pictured it to be. I, I'm just in love with this. I added a little hummingbird on the metal gate, and here you have the inside snow text again with the nouveau dots and the three-tier Merry Christmas, the gorgeous vines hanging down. I turned the light off so you could see the true vintage look of it in person. It's gorgeous. Then I flicked it back on. It, it looks better in real life. It truly does. And then running up the top, you have the poinsettias, the beautiful birds, the nouveau dots, and your, of course your bird's nest with your hot glue eggs. And there you have the, uh, the trees, the vines on the bottom, because you always want to rest your image on something. And it looks 3D, and I'm very, very pleased with it. My friends, I hope you liked this four-page Shabby Chic tutorial. I'm adding three more hummingbirds so that it stands out on the top. I just thought it would just blend itself to the little one on the front and the birds on the inside. And I appreciate the time you, you've taken to watch this video. I hope you're inspired to uh, make a card front that shabby chic for Christmas. I think you'll absolutely love it. It is a wonderful, wonderful card front to make any of these for. So have yourself a blessed week. Thank you for your comments. I'd love to know which side you, of the four you liked the best. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Enjoy the pictures, and I will see you on the next tutorial. Hopefully, this will go up. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye now.